UK has decided to leave the EU by 52% against 48% of the votes. We are here in front of the Parliament because we want to know what does this result mean for the energy sector? Well, first of all, I think we're not looking at something that happens tomorrow. What we're looking at is the UK leaving certainly some aspects of the EU over a period of time. As far as energy is concerned, uh, a lot of our energy policy has always been decided here in this country anyway. Whilst I do appreciate that we are tied into some directives, particularly relating to uh, closing down some of our old uh, coal-fired power stations and also on carbon reduction, uh, what uh, not being uh, fully part of the EU will allow us to do is take the steps in a cost-effective manner and with energy security as a priority. What's going to matter for our members, big energy consumers, consumers of gas and electricity, is making sure we have access to the single market. That's rather more important than whether we're actually EU members, of course, and that will require some negotiation. We import quite a lot of electricity, we certainly import a lot of gas, and we export gas as well during the summer to continental Europe. So it's in both sides' interest that that trade continues. That's good for security of supply, and it's good for consumers. I worry for consumers. I think prices will go up, not for our services, but for the energy agenda generally. There were tremendous streams of, um, of revenue or incentives available to the European Union that I think are going to disappear and it'll make the environment uh, challenging. How do you think this outcome is going to affect the country towards achieving its 2020 green targets? Well, I mean, that's a big question now. If we're not in Europe, do we still have 2020 targets? And I think that's what's going to be a fundamental question that we're going to be asking in the coming uh, weeks and months. We're going to have to take legal opinions on that, and we're going to have to see what our political leaders say about that. There is no reason why, going forward, the UK can't take, uh, can, cannot continue to take a lead on clean energy uh, and environmental issues. Um, if you look back over the last 10 to 15 years, both in and out of Europe, the UK has often taken a leading, leading position on environmental issues such as climate change uh, and it has also during that time built a very strong low carbon economy uh, at home that um, uh, already generates uh, a gross value added in excess of 46 billion pounds it employs more than 238,000 people and so the, the UK must uh, has, has got to continue leading on, on, on those areas. Boris Johnson pledged that uh, if we leave the EU energy bills will drop what do you think about that do you think it's possible? Well this is really important because the big deal is a consumer collective we are focused primarily on reducing consumer bills. The consensus was that bills would go up. So the Energy Secretary Amber Rudd said they would go up by £500 million a year if we left the EU. Now that actually meant, it wasn't quite what right, you know, what actually meant was if we left the internal energy market then prices might go up. Now we don't necessarily have to do that and it's important to remember that. The key thing is that Britain is a, a massive importer of energy. If we're paying now, euro prices, dollar prices for our energy, we're paying more because the pound's weaker. That's one thing that's really important. So that's why Boris Johnson's promise to scrap VAT on energy is monumentally important. If we're taking back control of one thing, right, let's use it to reduce bills. If he can take that 5% off bills, that means 60 quid back in the pockets of the British people.